Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here. I got two copies of this, one for our Sunday school superintendent and one for a young man that was uh, going through a little bit of an atheistic thing at our church. But uh, this obviously is a Christian classic. We have used it for many years, not me personally, but in Indiana Bible College as a standard textbook. Of course, years ago, it was in volume one and two, and then Nelson combined them into a nice gold color. And now, Josh McDowell's son Sean has come on board and it's completely updated and expanded so that is great in one volume I remember I was at Clayton State College one time and I was trying to see it doesn't hold flat in Genesis I was just seeing if it did even though I know it's not Genesis it's a book but uh, the rebuttal to evidence that demands a verdict was absolutely hilarious because they basically had nothing all they were trying to do was show contradictions in the Trinity and but they couldn't answer any of the historical things and this is the reason that they've had to say basically history doesn't matter nobody knows history archaeology doesn't matter is because history and archaeology all are showing incredible proofs of scripture and the divine revelation you got people like eric metaxas and others sitting here you know socrates in the city that are recommending this particular volume and it's been around for 40 years he got a lot of people think josh mcdowell wrote this but he more, he more like compiled it. Even if you go to the early editions, he's got folks from Georgia Tech, all kinds of people that helped him do the research. And he just did the compilation. So he went and taught, probably still does if he's still alive, on college campuses for years and years. Ravi Zacharias, K. Arthur, Lee Strobel. Well, I was listening to Ravi Zacharias the other night on the way home from our Blakely daughter work. He was on fire unbelievable you know I've gotten to where I just don't care much for Ravi Zacharias because he's just gonna mention Malcolm Muggeridge you know and uh, and uh, there it is it's so here we are like Craig Evans William Lane Craig Jim Daly president of folks on the family dr. Tony Evans uh, Everett Piper Michael Laconia who's written the definitive work on the resurrection David Limbaugh so this is just if if maybe you're an atheist read this book and read it at least with somewhat of an open mind and see if you can refute the things in this book this must have a glued binding and not be Smith's own because it doesn't open properly now again atheists will come out and say well there's um, refutations of this book no there's attempted refutations that's one of the fallacies I found in the modern world is somebody has a fact if somebody then disputes that fact now it's a disputed fact now you might say well, of course it's a disputed fact that's self-evident yeah but it's being used to say that it's in question when really the only people questioning are people that have a ideological agenda many times that don't want that particular truth to get out so this is an absolutely great book the forward a mirror requires a response why a massive book about evidence acknowledgments a theistic universe I'll show you that lifetime investment the historical liability of the New Testament I think I've done a uh, video on that I've done a video maybe on a few of these putting Jesus in his place by Rob Bowman if you want a book on the deity of Jesus that's not written from a oneness perspective and somebody that at least at one time was very antithetical to oneness putting Jesus in his place actually used incredible amounts of oneness argumentation by Rob Bowman I remember you might can still see these on YouTube he and uh, brother Sabin debating back in the day evidently really shook brother Sabin's faith I'm not sure maybe the stuff that went on with brother Norris up there and kind of some issues they may have had both just wonderful people though at one time in their lives I want to always like to let us see too what it looks like without the dust jacket and uh, kind of looks like that 
it's not the corrugated hardback. So let's see if I can put this dust jacket back on here. Should be able to in the short order. Okay, so we go to the in, uh, introduction, and these are just some things. Okay, some misconceptions about Christianity. Biblical teaching on sex is repressive and hateful. So it goes into Alan Plantiga which, according to Plantica, God is not the creator of evil, nor is morally culpable when mi humans misuse their freedom. Alan Plantica is considered to be maybe the leading philosopher in the world. And he's Christian. You can watch his videos on YouTube. Unbelievable. Because it's basically just common sense. That's what I get when I watch Alvin Plantica debate atheists and things. Is Basically, he's just using common sense. A good God would prevent evil and suffering. That's the argument of theodicy. Being a good person is enough to get to heaven. These are misconceptions. God has not provided enough evidence for uh, rational belief. That's crazy. If you know the evidence. Now, you're not going to see it at the university because they're spiking the evidence in many cases. They're ideologically driven instead of truth driven. In many cases, not all the time. Christianity and science are at war. No. Um, most scientific pioneers were theists. Goes into all that. Um, apologetics in the Old Testament. Five reasons apologetics is important today. Jesus the apologist. Which, apolo it's not apologizing. It's just defending the faith. That's what apologetics means. Why apologetics have a bad name. Apologetics often overstate their case. That's true. Apologetics often do not speak with gentleness. That's true. Respect and love. That's true. Um, apologists often is not emotionally healthy. That's probably true. Apologetics often is done in a cold, mechanical, and rationalistic manner. Probably true. Apologetics are often intellectual elitist. Yeah, true. But not all the time. Being a relational apologist. Uh, personal experience presuppositions, the evidence for theism, the origin of the universe. See, and stuff like this, the sophistication of the cell, explanations of the origin of life. See, the reason they had to develop the multiverse theory is because all the statistics said it was statistically impossible for evolution to have happened through a Big Bang. So they said, well, the Big Bang was so powerful it created multiverses. So then that expands the field of statistical probability. So we're just one verse. We're not a universe. We're a multipolarity. The uniqueness of the Bible. So this is how it is. It's kind of how it's going to be set up. And we've already gone through the uh, what was in the table of contents, that type thing. So this is just a great book. I, I couldn't recommend it more highly. As a matter of fact, that you almost it's a type book that you almost wish after somebody gets saved, you just hand them this book and say, read this book. <laughs> and uh, because they're never going to have a doubt about Christianity again, ever. So not only their experience, the, the fullness of the Holy Ghost, the washing away of sins, the incredible things that happen, but then they're going to be like, whoa. Um, this is that good. So this is uh, titles of deity, son of God, the trilemma, Lord, liar, lunatic, C.S. Lewis, Clive Staples, Lewis came up with that. Scriptural prophecies. He just goes into the resurrection. He's just very methodical. I've read the original books multiple times because especially volume one, because I just was curious about all this. Is Christianity a copycat religion? See, now that's a big YouTube thing. That, oh, it's just the Dionysian cult, the rebirth cult comes from Baal. That it's like the seasons, that uh, in winter the crops die. And then in the spring they resurrect. And that's what Jesus is. And that's why he was resurrected at Passover. Spring. And, and uh, it's just all these gods. And there's many books that get a ton of sales on Amazon through this. Okay, the martyrdom of the apostles, which, believe it or not, is an apologetic thing. Because why would they die for something that they knew was false? If they were trying to perpetrate a falsehood on the world. All right. And they were, originally, this wasn't 
yeah, anyhow, long story. Uh, archaeology in the Old Testament, historicity of the conquest, historicity of the patriarchs, some great uh, Holdren's book on the archaeology of the Bible. Fantastic. Biblical criticism, the nature of truth, answering skepticism, the possibility of miracles. See, when you read in the 18, 1700s, excuse me, how while wow, they were really fighting against Christianity was they didn't believe in miracles. Okay, Kruger, Kreef. So this bibliography, I'm just going to tell you, this bibliography, I just saw David Hume, which would have been kind of a either a deist or an anti-theist. A bibliography like this is just invaluable. If you want to get into apologetics, you get these books, go on eBay, go on Amazon, go on A, buy them cheap, maybe not in the best condition if you don't have good money. You know, like, that's why I have to buy my books. And uh, the bibliography is several pages. Uh, yeah, many, many, many pages. And then has a great author index and a subject index. And so this is right at 800 pages, 798 pages. Looks like it has maybe the four spiritual laws in the back what's known as the four spiritual laws. Um, and here's who Josh McDowell, Sean McDowell are. But to me, this book is totally unanswerable. You know, I've often said, if I was an atheist, obviously what atheists tend to do is deconstructionism and just scorn things. And so you would take this and try to deconstruct it. Well, you could, but you couldn't do it logically. You couldn't do it factually because the facts are still there. It's like Lenin said, facts are stubborn things. So this is absolutely incredible. Life-changing truth for a skeptical world. This is one of those books that if we had the money, love to send this out to every person in the world. Coke brothers, are you listening? And uh, give them a gift. Say, listen to this or read this. Tell it to your children. I think we'd have an amazing revival. So just like sending the Bible out. So God bless. I'll talk with you later in Jesus' name.